Hi guys, we're back here with Big Al. We're going to be going over a game on Friday the 17th. Now, for full disclosure, we're doing these videos the day before, just like I do my videos, because there's only so many hours in a day. So let's talk about, Al, that Milwaukee Bucks game. They finally got off the schneid. That was one of your higher-rated plays for all of our members here at All Access. And uh, we, we did that video the other day. We didn't really know the result when we did it. So let's let's talk about I had actually got a text from one of our clients, our all access clients, and I'm gonna read it to you. And he, he's in <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> no, no, no. He he he's in Michigan. Um, he's a very good client of us, very happy of the service. He said his exact words were at this uh, morning, I was watching the big Al All Access YouTube video that you and him did. The thing about Martingale is people think the previous and current plays correlate in terms of winning percentage. However, they do not realize that the winning percentage of an individual game is independent of the prior space. Even though the chances of losing 10 games in a row are low, semicolon, according to Murphy's Law, anything that can happen will happen. This guy's also in the computer science industry. He's, uh, I'm not going to get into what he does, but he's very high up in mathematics. So, you know, like he was saying, you know, you don't think you can lose 10 games in a row, but you can lose 10 games in a row. Yes. I mean, to be specific, it will, if everything's 50-50, it will happen once out of every 1,024 times. So if you flip a coin, you know, uh, 1,035 times, so you would at least have a, you know, 10 event streak at all points or whatever it, it, it will happen at least one time within those 1005 you know coin flips well let me another question that i got because uh, people do enjoy these uh, informative videos is do you feel that line makers because when we when we say the word line makers i'll let you elaborate do you feel that line makers adjust their number based upon short-term variance, meaning Brooklyn is 9-1-1 one, and one ATS and the Milwaukee Bucks are now 2-8-1 and one ATS. So you have the outliers on both sides. And, you know, we understand a it, lot. It, it does. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, bookmakers have to be anticipatory, right? I mean, they're not being predictive, but they have to be anticipatory as far as what will people bet on. Right. You know, and then if the bookmakers are right, the number will be somewhat static. If the bookmakers are wrong, they'll adjust the number even further to account for, you know, the betting action. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it all gets into it. You don't want to be overreactive. You don't want to, you know, I mean, if the Boston Celtics lose by 20 and they're still the best team in basketball, it doesn't matter if they've lost by 20. So you don't, you don't want to overreact to just one event, but when you've get a number of events, you know, yeah, bookmakers will adjust the number. Sure. And they expect that when the Nets come in on a game, when the Nets have their next matchup, that they're going to be overweighed on that game because they're 9-1 and one ATS. Not necessarily. Okay. Well, I'm asking you, I'm acting like I'm the middleman between the questions I get. Ask Al this, ask Al that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, it's – people will still bet on who they bet on. Um you know, but but again, well, it's, it's, in the old days when you and I got started, the ease and accessibility to, to, let's say, data that doesn't matter, that cloudies your decision, was not as easy as it is now. Like back when Duke was alive, you know, I was handwritten, like you, you know, handwritten books of paper. And, you know, now I can just go online and go, oh, the Nets are nine and one in the last. Sure. Yeah. But again, it, it, it's it, all this information is available. But it, as, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, you know, it's all about how do you process the information, right? And, and do, do you understand what it means, what it doesn't mean, and and what's important and what's not important? And I, I think a lot of people don't know how to process information. They uh, overweight things that should not be overweighted. Exactly, and you know, people again for you listening and you watching, if you're interested in getting access to the rating systems. Let's talk about, because I'm doing this video Thursday before the Ravens game starts, let's talk about your week so far to show people how it actually, and we well, obviously we can't include Thursday's results because Thursday's games haven't been played yet, but 
you have to have the ability to handle variance. Now, you're a professional. How do you define variance to the Joe Schmo? <laughs> I guess the, the best way Joe Schmo out there. It just means some days you might go three and six, other days you might go four and four, and other days you might go nine and oh. I guess that's variance. So we lose 7.8 units on Monday. We win 10.2 units on Tuesday. We win 11.4 units on Wednesday. So we go from minus 7.8 units to plus 14 units, basically, before tonight's Thursday night games begin. And like I explained to clients, you have to be able to handle the roller coaster ride because, again, the reason why this is a high net worth product for high net worth individuals is a high net worth individual isn't worrying about each individual game nor result. He's in it for the long game. And, and, and this is why it's not for everybody. Now, it came into play yesterday. You always say you're accessible. I had a client of mine text to me, a client of ours. He said, I'm going oh, to the, the Wizards. Yeah, the Dallas Mavericks. He said, I'm going to the Wizards game. Um, yeah. he, and um, he, lives in, he lives in Washington, D.C., um, not far from me. And he says, S, Al, and I just screenshotted the text to you. And it was like five in the morning your time. And you came right back. And then I, I, I checked the score and I'm like, whoa, they're up by 20. So yeah. at least we made his game. But that's one of the advantages of being a subscriber to Big Al's. Um, I talked to a client today uh, um, who is a subscriber. Um, and again, he, his exact words were ratings are everything. You know, it. The biggest thing that a lot of high net worth individuals struggle with is knowing which games to bet bigger, which games to bet smaller. And that's where when you posted that ticket on Twitter, where you have clients literally running to Vegas and saying, I got a hundred grand in my pocket. How should I slice up this pizza pie? And you, hey, well, that listen, one guy on Twitter, he put it all in one game. I mean, it wasn't just. Well, it was the whole pizza pie on the one right. game. So, uh, you know, if you're serious and you're a high net worth individual and you can afford to bet 500 a unit, I would say minimum, which means your smallest wager is 500, your largest wager is 5,000, send me a text at 775-636-7676. Let's get into tomorrow's Friday evening's complimentary selection. What are we looking at in the NBA? Yeah, you know, this is an interesting thing. We see it a lot more in the NBA these days than we did, you know, 10, 20 years ago. It's a right what i call a right back revenge or you know they, they play these back-to-back -back meetings sometimes it's home and home sometimes both games are scheduled you know at the same venue like this one is um so you you have the second of back-to-back -back meetings between the bulls and the magic both games being played in chicago the magic did win round one on tuesday by two points 96 94 is a two and a half point underdog now for this rematch the spread is ticked down one and a half points it's sitting at chicago minus one I like the Bulls in this right back revenge rematch. When you get a team, you know, but in these back to back games, when they lost straight up and against the spread in the first meeting, they do really well in the second meeting, provided uh, they were not an underdog of more than two points in either of the two games. So they were favored or they were a tiny underdog, you know. In other words, they were kind of expected to win, right? Um, and those, those teams have gone 124 and 75 ATS going back to 1990. So it's it's solid. You know, you're looking at 63% or 62% percent of change. And I'm going to take Chicago uh, minus the one point. There you go. The Bulls, not the Bears. The Bulls is your complimentary selection. If you guys are ready to rock and roll, send me a text 775-636-7676. We'll be back with a complimentary selection for this Saturday. Good day and good luck.